For this review lesson, I will cover things that are not in the notes I prepared. Again, you can download these notes and the practice problems at my website. In F equals to QE, the charge Q is the one that is placed in the electric field. And this electric field is the property of a location. So we can talk about the electric field at a certain location. And if we place a charge at that location, this is what we can use to find the force that acts on this charge that is placed in the electric field. And this electric field is produced by some other charge distribution, not this charge. For example, if I have an electric field going to the right, and I put a positive Q in this electric field, the electric force acting on this positive charge would be F equals to Q times E, and uh, the force will be in the same direction as the electric field. If I put a negative charge in this electric field, the force acting on the charge would also be Q times E, but the force will be in a direction that is opposite to the direction of the electric field. For point charges, we can use these equations to find the electric force between two point charges or use this equation to find the electric field produced by a point charge. Because they are vectors, I do not plug in the signs for these charges. I only use those equations to find the magnitude of the electric force or the electric field. And then I look at the picture for direction and then take care of the vectors accordingly. Let's say we have those three point charges and we want to find the net electric force acting on this point charge. So there are two electric forces acting on this charge. The one between those two is an attractive force. The one between those two, repulsive force. So we have two forces, we can just add them together. So we can do KQ1 times Q2 over R squared and to find one force and then to do the KQ1 Q2 over R squared to find another force and then add them together because they're in the same direction. If they're in the opposite directions, then I do the bigger side minus the smaller side to find the net force. Or I may have two point charges, Q1 and negative Q3, and uh, I can ask you to find the electric field right over here at this location in space. In this case, I would have two point charges producing electric field over here. The field produced by the positive charge goes out of the positive charge, so it goes to the right. The field produced by the negative charge goes into the negative charge, so it goes to the right as well. And then I just have to use the KQ over R squared to find the, each field and then add the magnitudes together because they're in the same direction. Again, if they're in the opposite directions, then I would do the bigger side minus the smaller side to find the net electric field at this location. We have also done problems like these. Two point charges over here, and uh, the question may ask us to find either the place to put a charge Q3 so that the net electric force on that third charge is zero. Or it may ask us uh, to find the location at which the electric field produced by these two point charges is zero. The answers to those two questions are the same. Because uh, if the electric field is zero at a certain location, that means uh, whatever charge we place at that location, the electric force on that charge will be zero because F equals to QE. If the electric field is zero, the force on that charge will be zero. So it's the same location. So let's say if we want the electric field to be zero, there are two electric fields at any location because uh, we have two charges producing electric field. In order for the net electric field to be zero, the two fields produced by those two charges must be equal and opposite. That means uh, we have to be closer to the weaker charge. And uh, if those two charges have the same signs, the location is going to be somewhere in between because, let's say, if it's this location, the field produced by this one goes out of the positive charge. The field produced by that one goes out of the positive charge. So those two fields can be opposite, so they can cancel. If it's out here, the field produced by the positive charge will go to the left away from the positive charge, the field produced by that positive charge will also go to the left, away from that charge. Therefore, 
they can never cancel. So let's say if this location is a distance x away from the positive 2 nanocoulombs. In order for the two fields to be equal, that means k times the positive 2, na 2 nanocoulombs divided by r squared. So kq over r squared for the electric field. r is x must equal to the field produced by that charge, which is kq, it's 8 nano, divided by the distance, which is 0.1 minus x squared. I didn't bother to write out the nano as 10 to the negative 9th because I know the nano is going to cancel. And the k's cancel as well. To avoid the quadratic equation, before we cross multiply, we can take the square root first. So I get square root 2. Actually, it will be easier if I also divide by 2 on both sides. So I get 1 and 4. Okay. So if I take square root on both sides, I get uh, 1 over x equals to square root of 4, which is 2 divided by 0.1 minus x. Now if I cross multiply, I'll be able to solve for x. So I will have 2x equals to 0.1 minus x. So x will be 0.1 divided by 3, 0.033 meters. If the two charges carry opposite signs, then the location would be outside. And it's going to be closer to the weaker charge, so it's going to be outside on this side. We can also have a two-dimensional problem. For example, this is a square and we have three-point charges at the corners of the square and we're looking for the electric field at the fourth corner. In this case, there are three-point charges producing field over here. The field produced by the positive Q goes out of the positive charge. The field produced by that positive Q goes out of that positive charge and it's the same amount of charge equal distance away, so these two fields will have the same magnitude. And then the field produced by that charge would go into the negative charge. Now it's, it may not be obvious how this magnitude would relate to these two magnitudes. But that's okay, we can take care of that later. So to find the net electric field here, we have to add these three electric field vectors together. Because of the symmetry along this diagonal, that means uh, it's easy for, easier for us to add these two vectors together first and then take care of the third vector. So here, when we add these two vectors together, we can make a parallelogram, and in this case it is a square, and the diagonal is the sum. So we can first find the electric field produced by one charge, and that will be kq over r, which is l squared. And then the diagonal of a square would be the side kq over l squared times the square root of 2. And then we can take care of that one and this one. They're in the opposite directions, so we all have to subtract. And this field is k3q over r squared and this distance over here would be L times square root 2. So on this side, I have 3 over square root 2 squared, so 3 halves. For on this side, I have square root 2. And the 3 halves happens to be bigger than square root 2, so I'm going to use the bigger side minus the smaller side to find the net electric field. Okay, so I'm going to do K3Q over this squared which would be L squared times 2 minus this side, that we KQ over L squared times square root 2. And if I factor out KQ over L squared, I'll get 3 halves minus square root 2. And this net electric field will go that way because that's a stronger field than this part. Or I can have a triangle, equilateral triangle with three point charges and let's say we want to find the net electric force on the negative Q over here. We would have two electric forces acting on this charge. The force between those two will be attractive. 
the force between those two also attractive. And because these are same amount of charge equal distance away, these two fa vectors must have the same magnitude. So to find the sum, we just have to make a parallelogram. We have to add them by adding vectors. And the, the diagonal is the sum we're looking for. Because this is an equilateral triangle, this angle here is 60 degrees. By symmetry, this angle here would be 30 degrees. So what we can do is uh, first to find the electric force uh, between these two charges. And then we can find the component along this direction. Because this electric force has a, a component that's perpendicular to this direction and the parallel. And then this, this one also has two components. And these two components, they cancel. So we only have to take care of the component that's along this direction. Okay, because the component we want is along this direction, which is adjacent to the angle, so it's the cosine component. So let's see. We can first find the force between these two charges. And that force, or this one, is uh, K Q1 times Q2, which is uh, Q squared over R squared, which is uh, L squared. And that component over there would be the cosine component, because uh, this angle here is also 30 degrees. And that side, we get the same contribution. So to add those two components together, we just have to multiply this whole thing by 2 which gives us uh, kq squared over l squared times the square root of 3.